Hey, what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Addict here. So this film's marketing was kind of shit, which is pretty shameful because this movie's background for an exorcism movie, kind of cool. So I'm going to be completely honest. I never saw this film's trailer. When the trailer dropped, I saw a film titled The Exorcism was coming out starring Russell Crowe. I was like, oh, there's a sequel uh, because I remember last year or no, the year before last, was it? Was the last year the year before last? Either way, when The Pope's Exorcist came out, a sequel was reported to be in development, which I wasn't too crazy on The Pope's Exorcism, uh, nor am I, like, huge on exorcism films in general. But, I mean, everyone thought that this film was a sequel. I mean, it's a two-year gap, maybe less. Look at these posters and tell me that these films aren't related. But I read the premise just to see if there would be anything that could potentially, like, interest me about this film. And boy, fellas, this premise had me in. This was quite possibly the most anticipated I have ever been for a new exorcism movie. So the premise here reads, The exorcism follows Anthony Miller, a troubled actor who begins to unravel while shooting a supernatural horror film. His estranged daughter wonders if he's slipping back into his past addictions or if there's something more sinister at play. Yes, this is an exorcism movie centering on the production of an exorcism movie, where while shooting that film, the actor in that movie gets possessed <laughs> for real and makes this film therefore its own exorcism movie. And if that wasn't enough, this film has sparked a lot of theories like among the uh, horror community. With this film in fact being the directorial debut from none other than the son of John Anthony Miller, which if that name does not ring a bell, that is the actor that played the priest in the original Exorcist movie. And with this film's plot being about a actor that gets cursed while shooting an Exorcism movie, a lot of people were connecting the dots, you know, putting two and two together with the relation of this film's director as well as the actor from The Exorcist, the cursed history behind that film, that this film could very well be based off of that. And even more interesting, caught these uh, little details on my own before seeing the film, Russell Crowe's character in this film is actually named Anthony Miller. Uh, also, Linda Blair herself also introduced this film before one of its screeners. Uh, have yet to watch that, but with all this and not seeing the trailer, I was pretty interested to see this film. I'll even go as far as to say that I was sold. I bought a ticket, without a doubt the most curious I have ever been going into a new exorcism film. So right away, uh, yeah, with the setup and setting of this film, the film opens with like a dude who's reading the script while walking around the filming location. Just him in a crickety old house. And what's that? Oh, yes, it is the house from The Exorcist. Or so I thought. About 30 minutes or so into this movie, there's a line where a character goes, Don't you know what kind of film we're making? Have you forgotten what kind of movie we're making? Uh, and I start wiggling in my seat, so I'm like, You're gonna drop the ball? Here it is. Here's the confirmation. Uh, yes, confirmation that was not on my radar. She goes, Yeah, we're shooting one of those uh, films that are like, you know, The Omen, The Poltergeist. And I'm like, Uh-huh. And then she goes, or The Exorcist. Movies like The Omen or The Exorcist. That's right. All that I said before this point in the review is all out the window. This is not a film based on The Exorcist or its cursed history, even though all the connecting the dots, all the theories, they were all within reach. All the things I uh, bought this ticket for, it's out the window. This is its own exorcism movie and boy does it suck. Cause I'm just gonna say like during this film's intro, I mean, I found it pretty fun. It w again, it was just this one guy doing these tests. You know, he has got like his script in hand, walking around this house, creepy shit does start happening. And since I thought this was in fact the exorcist house, and since this is about filming a horror movie that I thought was the exorcist, I, I gotta say like, it was fun because when creepy shit starts happening, you have that like sense where it's like, well, is this creepy shit that's going on because they're testing some stuff for the movie that they're filming? Or is this creepy shit going on because, well, it's the fucking exorcist. And that shit is fucking cursed, as we all know. I did a video on it in my earliest days on this fucking website. Also, just really quickly, um, there's gonna be a couple times in this movie where I nod, like, some, uh, homages and, like, <laughs> references to, like, other horror films. And, like, what I'm gonna say is that the way that the film captures the look of this set in the very beginning of this movie in its intro, yeah, very inspired by her by Hereditary, which 
at that point where I'm like, okay, well, this is clearly the Exorcist house. Now you're playing paying homage to the Hereditary movie. Another top-tier demon horror film. I was entertained so far with the intro before, like, 30 minutes into the movie, realizing that everything I thought was completely out the window. Also, the opening credits, seeing the streets, seeing the city, it feels very OG Exorcist movie. There just seemed to be a lot of understandable homage and reference to other horror films that felt appropriate because of what this film's premise is, as well as setting-wise, as well as the background. I am gonna say, though, uh, pretty early on, like, early on meaning right after this pretty promising intro, the film already takes just such a boring, slow shift as far as tone and pace to try and set up, like, a character background arc for Russell Crowe's character, which sounds fine, but you also gotta understand, this is a 90-minute movie about shooting a horror film. That should be the whole movie, in my opinion. But also, though, considering the character that Crow plays in this film, again, his name being Anthony fucking Miller, God, what a dick when you find out that this movie has nothing to do with the original Exorcist. Again, a character background, like, wouldn't be the worst thing, especially considering who this film is directed by. But for as much as this sounds in the bag and has so much potential, there was just nothing personal or special, or interesting, or new during this character's story in this movie, which I will say, a lot of that slow, like, centering on Russell Crowe's character in this film, there is a good portion of it where it's centering on him as an actor tackling this kind of film, even when the f movie is not centering, like, focusing on the movie being shot at that moment. You know, we're seeing a lot of, like, development process, the actor behind the work, the inspiration for the film, the kind of, like, toll it's having on him, especially with his, like, personal background, his past and everything. Again, appropriate stuff that should have nothing to do with being a slog whatsoever. But there's just no way to this stuff. There's no build-up. There's no real background or any real significant detail, again, to this character behind and before the film that he's, you know, working on. But, uh, going into something more positive that, like I mentioned at the beginning, where there's gonna be- where I'm gonna be talking to- about, like, some references to other films, the way that this movie is shot, how it looks just cinematically, I always enjoyed looking at it. It's got a dim, dark filter to it, uh, kinda looks like how Talk To Me cine cinematography looked, but- also, for a movie being about the filming of a horror film, an exorcism one, the amount of cheap, fake-out jump scares in this film, it was fucking ass. And I'm not talking about, like, jump scares relating to the horror film that they're shooting, or even, like, relating to the possession part of this film about, like, you know, Russell Crowe's character getting possessed while acting in this movie. No, I'm talking about just jump scares that happen every other minute that apparently this director thinks that his father's legacy and the horror genre itself is just about jump scares. Also, this didn't really seem to have, like, any concrete, genuine story. It seemed like it was the case where the only thing that this film had going for was an interesting premise, and even that just got like the least amount of screen time in this movie. The more the film went on, the more I wished it were actually that behind the scenes origin story movie based on that of The Exorcist. That's what I thought it was originally, that's what got me to buy the, the ticket, and it sure as hell would have made for a much better story. And even going into the other side of this film's premise, that being Russell Crowe's character like getting possessed, it didn't really feel like he needed to be possessed as far as, like, the pace of the story, nor does it really build up to that or give the audience a reason to feel like he needs to be possessed. It's just baffling how much this film failed at things that seem to be so in the bag, and how within reach those were, and how much better and more this film could have been. Also, goddamn, when the film is finally centering on shooting the exorcism movie, like, that- that part. Holy God! The acting, the tone, the- hell, even the score. How do you fuck up a score to an exorcism scene? It's all just so comical, and believe it or not, when it's not this, the whole scene is just completely silent. Russell Crowe barely says anything as the guy that's, like, trying to exercise the little girl. Which, uh, speaking of her performance in the comical, uh, bullshit of all this- this entire scene, this is literally her performance, guys. Here's Here comes my Oscar win. Cocksucker! The, 
Fuck you. There's no tension. There's no acting. There's no horror. Oh yeah, about that score, yeah, um, there's a couple, like, strings that are being plucked while she's doing this. Other than that, yeah, Russell Crowe doesn't really say a fucking word, and there's absolute silence otherwise. There is one scene, though, where, like, Russell Crowe busts through a fucking mirror and kills a guy. I thought that was pretty fun. But yeah, I'm giving this movie a negative review. Uh, that is gonna do it for my review of The Exorcism. With all of the videos that I did this week, I didn't need to do this review, but especially after seeing the movie, I really didn't need to do this review. Let me know what you guys thought about the review as well as the exorcism in the comments uh, down below for those that did see it. With all that being said, guys, I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Take care.